Hi everyone, I am Dr. Suresh Sebori, Consultant Surgical Gastroenterologist and Laparoscopic Surgeon at Pace Hospital, Hydex City. Today, I will be answering few frequently asked questions related to umbilical hernia. So, before knowing about umbilical hernia, we should know what exactly is hernia. Hernia is abnormal protrusion of contents through a weakest part or a defect in the abdomen wall. Whenever the defect is located in this umbilicus region, that is navel region, it is called as umbilical hernia. So most of the times the first symptom will be the swelling per se or the lump that which is seen at this umbilicus region. And apart from this presentation of swelling or a lump at the umbilical region, there are certain situations where the, where the symptoms might differ and can, I mean, and can uh, tell the story of underlying complication. This could be irreducibility, strangulation or obstruction. So, irreducibility is nothing but the contents which are protruded through this defect might not reduce on their own. It is called as irreducibility. Second thing is the obstruction. Whenever the content that is herniating is the bowel or the intestine, the lumen gets obstructed or occluded. This can, these patients can present with recurrent vomitings or pain. And third, one, third and most crucial one or uh, important one is strangulation. Strangulation is cut off of blood supply to the part that is herniated. It's, it's a kind of emergency situation. The patient might present with, the patient usually present with severe pain. The changes of, changes over the skin, the herniated, uh, the swelling, the skin over the swelling might be red tender and on touch it could be severe it could elicit severe pain and these are all symptoms of underlying complication any manual or any uh, circumstance which increases the pressure within the abdomen wall associated with weakness of the wall per se can cause um, umbilical hernia logically so what are this uh, what are the uh, conditions in which there is increased pressure within the abdomen. One important thing is obesity. Second thing is cro chronic cough that who, who patients cough for weeks or months together like in case of asthma or any COPD that is disease of the lungs associated with smoking. This can uh, cause raised intra abdomen pressure. Third thing is very important thing is constipation. Patients in whom uh, in which they usually strain while passing motion. These are also at high risk of developing umbilical hernia and uh, next thing is the multiple pregnancies any woman who has history of multiple pregnancies uh, uh, with multiple pregnancies what happens is this umbilical wall weakens due to stretching so these patients are also at increased risk of umbilical hernia and uh, a few other uh, clinical conditions which can cause uh, accumulation of fluid within the abdomen wall like in patients with liver diseases these patients are at risk of developing what is called as ascites that is accumulation of fluid within the abdomen wall these patients are at risk of developing umbilical hernia usually no so, uh, what pe uh, patients might uh, uh, feel as the disease being born, that is, this, they no longer see the swelling, is actually reduced swelling. The defect or the weakness per se stays. They are at risk of again developing the swelling. So, it is usually the reduced contents and not the hernia going off, which they perceive as disease gone. So, any amount of suspicion that is swelling in this umbilical region which increases, decreases depending on the manure or the uh, or the act uh, raises the suspicion of umbilical hernia. Whenever there is suspicion of umbilical hernia, simple ultrasound abdomen or clinical examination per se can help in confidently diagnosing umbilical hernia. So, whenever an umbilical hernia is diagnosed, the gold standard is surgery and in what way we are doing surgery is it open or lab depends on the surgeon and the patient. So, uh, there are in certain circumstances where patient might not be fit for an anesthesia in those uh, circumstances to avoid any unforeseen complications. So, uh, gold standard of treatment in umbilical hernia is surgery only and especially among the surgeries laparoscopic uh, repair of the umbilical hernia has come in a big way. So, uh, like in any hernia surgery, the uh, crucial part is 
placing a mesh mesh actually after closing uh, as i described all this uh, all the symptoms and the uh, signs of umbilical hernia are due to the defect this defect usually is closed with a suture and then the part the weakened part that is umbilical umbilicus here is reinforced with a prosthetic mesh so it is the gold standard for any umbilical hernia surgery so among among the techniques i described previously laparoscopy that is sutureless or scarless repair of this umbilical hernia with a mesh reinforced reinforcement is the gold standard so usually the patient will be discharged in a couple of days in the very next day or in certain circumstances two days after the day of surgery so usually if, uh, in, pe in people who does desk jobs they can resume their activities in a week's time or in patients who does strenuous activities uh, which require uh, which require lifting weights and all those things we usually tell them to avoid lifting weights for at least three weeks of time so usually in an untreated patient but diagnosed with umbilical hernia we, we usually tell the patients to avoid lifting uh, lifting heavy weights or uh, per se uh, doing any strenuous exercises because in these patients whenever you perform strenuous activities these patients are at risk of developing any complications uh, secondary to umbilical hernia but in patients who do undergo, undergo surgery for umbilical hernia we usually encourage them to do all the activity physical activities uh, for that part in lifting any uh, any uh, doing any strenuous activities or lifting heavy weights after three months from the day of surgery so uh, usually i mean uh, traditionally as per the literature the recurrences are seen even after hernia surgery but in the tune of 5 to 10 percent depending on various factors as i said there are certain risk factors for any uh, umbilical hernia so if the patient continues to have those risk factors that is obesity so in this matter we usually advise the patient for any weight loss uh, treatment so as to avoid any future complications and also uh, cough chronic cough the patient persists to have chronic cough or any prostate symptoms which which involves increased abdominal pressure uh, uh, while passing urine and all those things uh, when these things are there these patients are at risk of developing recurrences also so usually we we advise certain lifestyle modifications in these patients so as to decrease any uh, recurrence rates So, as I said in the, in, the, in the previous question, there is a certain lifestyle changes that are required uh, to decrease any recurrences, if at all, in the future after surgery for umbilical hernia. So these include all the precautions, weight loss, that is any patients, any obese patients who are at increased risk of recurrences after hernia surgery to, should work out on weight loss. Second thing is chronic cough so these patients who has history of chronic cough that is asthma or any copd conditions should take uh, uh, necessary precautions to avoid this chronic cough third thing is uh, avoiding uh, constipation these patients should be on uh, a high fiber diet and taking adequate oral liquids so as to avoid any constipation any future constipation episodes and thereby increasing the risk of constipation fourth thing is uh, to avoid uh, to take all the uh, treatment for any prosthetic symptoms if at all especially in el elderly males these patients are at risk of developing hernias elsewhere if not at the umbilicus umbilical region elsewhere also these uh, lifestyle precautions should be taken uh, uh, should be taken so as to avoid any future complications apart from strengthening the core muscles these includes all the exercises that should be done under supervision to increase uh, to increase the um, strength of the abdominal wall muscles per se these uh, lifestyle modifications help in decrease decreasing the rate of any future recurrences so during pregnancy these patients uh, will tend to have prominent swelling the swelling which was there usually before pregnancy also tends to become so much prominent and also the chances of increasing uh, increased complications are also there during pregnancy obviously due to raised intra-abdomen pressure these patients are at risk of developing strangulation what is what i have told previously obstruction or incarceration or irreducibility so these patients usually are treated managed uh, are treated conservatively during the course of pregnancy 
uh, and this this is done uh, with uh, simple manuals such as supporting this um, umbilical hernia during any strenuous activities like coughing the simple coughing and all those things and encouraging the patient uh, to wear certain uh, abdominal support external abdominal supports like abdomen belts and all those things these um, patients can be managed conservatively during the course of pregnancy and these are encouraged and to undergo surgery for umbilical hernia after the uh, pregnancy. So, certain uh, signs in these patients with umbilical hernia denotes underlying complications. So, these include sudden increase in pain, sudden changes of skin over that swelling, or uh, uh, swelling suddenly becomes tender, that is painful on touch. These are the some symptoms of underlying complications. These could be, uh, uh, these complications should, uh, uh, will uh, range from simple irreducibility to surgical emergency like obstruction and gangrene of the contents which have been herniated. So, whenever patients see that there is sudden increase in swelling, sudden uh, increased pain or sudden development of any skin changes should raise suspicion of complications and these patients should immediately take any doctor's help. So, I, as I told previously all the risk factors such as obesity, uh, uh, cough, chronic cough, constipation should be addressed in the first place and secondly, there should be uh, strengthening of the core muscles of the abdomen. This can be done under supervision and with certain uh, exercises. These uh, things help us in reducing the rates of occurrence of umbilical hernia. These are all the frequently asked questions regarding the umbilical hernia. If you have any further queries or doubts, you can contact us at Pace Hospital High Tech City. I am Dr. Suresh Seyapuri, Consultant Surgical Gastroenterologist and Laparoscopic Surgeon at Pace Hospital.